thank you, Lord Jesus, that you are indeed our living hope. And thank you that that hope is renewed by you morning by morning. Thank you for your grace and your presence, for your love and the gifts of your wisdom. And we pray today as we worship in this place and as we hear your word that you would renew our faith and fill us with your spirit. And we ask this, Lord Jesus, in your holy name. Amen. Hallelujah. Please be seated. Welcome, St. Margaret's. Welcome for those who are here physically and those who will be joining us virtually. I've got to remember regularly to look at the camera as well as look at you, which when you're my age is quite a different thing to remember, but it is great wherever you are that you've joined us. And thank you, Nate, for leading us in worship like that. It's great to have you leading us on this first, uh, uh, on this first service we've had here since the 12th of February. So it is great that you're able to be here and since the 12th of February. Nate, who's our regular worship leader with us, has uh, gone through a selection conference to train to be a vicar in the Church of England. So, I mean, he might well end up as the next vicar of St. Margaret Lothbury, which will be very exciting and very wild as well. It'd be great. But uh, thank you for coming and thank you for joining us. In a moment, Ada Kevy, our church warden, is going to come and speak to us. I can't think of a better person to start off our physical uh, services. Our reading... Today is from Psalm 126. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dreamed. Our mouths were filled with laughter, our tongues with songs of joy. Then it was said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us and we are filled with joy. Restore our fortunes, Lord, like streams in the Negev. Those who sow with tears will reap with songs of joy. Those who go out weeping, carrying seed to sow, will return with songs of joy, carrying sheaves with them. Let me start by doing a very on Church of England thing. Praise the Lord! Hallelujah. It's great to be back here. I remember during the lockdown and... Um, waiting and thinking and dreaming that would this day ever come but um i'll start with prayer because i think that's the best place for us to start father lord we just want to thank you today we want to thank you for this opportunity as your children to be able to come together and worship you physically in this house of yours we just ask for more of your spirit and more of your of more of you just come holy spirit just come and as I begin to preach now, I just pray, Lord, that your Holy Spirit will guide me and direct me, Lord, and just show me the things I need to bring out in this passage. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. 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 So, um, actually, um, you, you couldn't have chosen a better psalm for us to read today. Psalm 127, looking at it, it's, um, it's like a psalm of a song of restoration. It's... Um, composed for those who are coming back from captive and um, their mouths were filled with laughter and their tongues with songs of joy then it was said amongst the nation the Lord has gone, done great things for them the Lord has done great things for us and we're filled with joy and I think that just captures exactly how I feel today because there was a point in time that I was dreaming that you know are we ever going when are we going to get back into church and it's almost like a dream for me to be here today, physically in church, you know. It's the first time I've actually witnessed um, live worship since March. It's just incredible. It's like a dream, you know. I love YouTube. I love listening to music on YouTube. But there's nothing like the real thing, just hearing the real sound of music. And just as, um, as in the Bible here, it says, you know, their mouths were filled with laughter and their tongues with songs of joy. And... It's just such a lovely feeling, and we just can't thank God enough. And the three things I want to bring out today really are praise, prayer, and promise. So when we look at the first three 
um, chapters of this. It's all about praise, you know. We're thanking God. We're thanking God because we've come from where we are, where we were previously, to a new season now. And I'm just so happy to be here. And like I said, it's, it's almost like a dream. You know, you've always, I've kind of always imagined, what am I going to do the first time I go to church? Am I going to go absolutely crazy? Would I be crying? Would I be singing? And it's just such a dream. You know, I'm sorry if I keep repeating the same thing, but this passage is just apt, you know. It's just like a dream to be here. And I'm not taking it lightly, you know. I'm so grateful to God. And all I just want to do is just to praise God, really, from the bottom of my heart for that opportunity to be back here in a building, you know, not sitting down in my living room watching, t watching stuff on TV, but actually being able to, you know, be with other Christians as well and just to sing and lift up my hands and just praise God. And I think looking at this, you know, they, they had been through a lot before they got to this place. And I believe that we have also been through a lot since March. I came back to work last week, Wednesday, for the first time. And it's just so different. It's almost as if that was a different world and this is now a different world. But I know it's still the same thing. But we're grateful. We're thanking God. And I think the fact that we can thank God now means that we can also continue to believe and know that everything is going to be restored, which takes me on to the next section of the passage, which is um, verse 4, which says, Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the steams in the Negrev. You know, and that is the beat about prayer. You know, I think now that we've come through that first phase, you know, it gives us the, the confidence to be able to pray to God for restoration, for full restoration, because I don't believe that we're where we want to be. You know, we're on a journey, but we've passed through the first stage, and there's the next stage for us to, to go through. And we just need to start praying for restoration, really. It saddens me that um, I'm sitting on my floor at work, and maybe there's like, I don't know, maybe one-fifth or something of the number of people that will be there. You're walking up and down the streets of the city, and, and it's, it's, it's almost empty, you know, it's almost as if something has happened and everyone's disappeared and you're like left behind. So we just need to keep praying for that restoration. And because of the prayer, because of the early part where we know that we were thanking God because he's done great things, it just has to give us that belief and res resolution to know that we just have to keep praying, that everything is going to be restored. You know, it's not a, it's not a halfway house. Everything is going to be restored. We don't know when. We have, to, we have that confidence that we know that we're on a journey and we're going to get there. And we just want to pray boldly. You know, I don't like the new norm. I don't know about you. I don't like the new norm. I don't really like the fact that I get on the train and I'm wearing a face mask. Um, I don't know if you listened to my earlier sermons during the lockdown where I said, you know, I was filled with fear. You know, I'm still not back at Sainsbury's. There's nothing that's going to make me go back to the supermarkets now. I'm still, you know, I still have my strategies of coping, you know. I still have my antibacterial just by the door. You know, when I get in, I'll probably wipe my shoes before I go into the house and, you know, all those funny, funny things. So I know I'm not where I'm supposed to be, but I'm glad that I'm getting to where I am. There was a time I wouldn't get on the train, but now I'm getting on the train. I'm trying to come to work once a week, you know. I'm trying to do things, but I know it's still not where we want to be. We want that day where the pews in the church will be filled up. We want to get to that place where we're not wearing masks anymore. And then, you know, we want to think about the people who are actually really, really affected. Some people don't have jobs. Their livelihoods have gone. You know, they don't have hope. You know, things are really, really bad. So we just want to keep praying for that restoration. We want to pray for wisdom for our leaders. We want to pray for Boris Johnson. We want to pray for the governor of the Bank of England. We want to pray for the CEOs in the companies where we work. We want to pray for the heads of the schools where, we are, where, where our children go to or where, you know, we just want to keep praying for restoration, for things to happen quickly. You know, it's been a very, very long slog. And I don't know about you, but the clocks are going to go back shortly. You know, what hope are we going to hold on to then? And it's just that hope that we need to pray for restoration. It's going to be very dark. You know, the days will be shorter and it's going to be dark most of the time. You know, so what are we going to hold on? We just have to keep praying and believing that everything is going to be restored and just go on with that faith. 
And then the final section I want to talk about is promise, really. And we can see this when we read um, 5 to 6, where it talks about those who go out in tears will reap with songs of joy. He who goes out weeping, carrying seed to sow, will return with songs of joy, carrying sheaves with him. So I believe in this session, you know, in this season, we've been sowing and we've been reaping. And although we're sowing and we're reaping, it's with a lot of tears. It's with a lot of hardship. You know, there's so many things that have been happening. You know, we had the Black, Black Life Matters um, campaign going on. I would not normally go out and get involved in things like that, but I felt it was important for me to start sowing a seed and start standing for the things that I believe in. And I think that's something that has come out in this season. I would not normally be very vulnerable, but I was, I've been speaking out at work. I've been involved in sessions at work, telling them the things that hurt me, the things I have felt as a black person, the things that have been said to my son, you know, um, things that have been said, not directly, but indirectly, but you know they're the wrong things to say. Like someone asking you where your son was studying and you were saying your son was studying in Leeds and they automatically assumed that because he was black he had to be at Leeds Beckett and not the main Leeds University. So things like that, you're starting to speak out for it and calling out people and you're thinking about, you know, things like the Love Thy Neighbor campaign. People are going out, feeding people, you know, just using their time to make the lives of others, you know, to make lives better, you know, to just help others, even though they're struggling themselves, and just realizing that some people don't have food to eat. You know, some people are driving around collecting medication. People that live on their own, are you giving them a call? Are you ringing them? So all these are the seeds that we're sowing, even though there are tears. And I believe that we're going to reap the harvest of all these seeds that we're sowing. Things are starting to change, you know. Boards will change. There'll be more female in, um, in, on the board of companies. You know, there'll be more black and ethnic minority people in, in companies and being promoted. We can see things happening around us in the city. The um, Kaz School has changed its name to Allgate School. Kaz University has changed its name. So things are coming out that we would not normally do. But I think there's been, I just feel that there's been a heightened sensitivity because of what is happening at the moment. You know, because everyone is in lockdown, people are thinking a bit more. They're thinking about the things that are dear to their hearts and they're standing up and doing things. Although I was born in this country, my heritage is in Nigeria. And right now, there's been a lot of uprising by the youths in Nigeria. And did you know the songs they're singing? They're just going, this is how I fight my battle, you know. That is the song they're singing as they're protesting, saying, you know, it may look like we're surrounded, but we're surrounded by you. So they're walking up to government offices and they're singing that song and they're praying and they're asking for change because these are the seeds that we have to sow now. We want change to happen and we are the change. We are the ones that are going to bring about the change. So although a lot has happened, you know, it's, a, it's also an opportunity for us to bring about change in our hearts. Wherever things are hurting us, wherever things are paining us, you know, this is the time for us to stand up and be that change that we want to be. Because I believe that when we sow, we would reap and we would return with songs of joy. When we start seeing things changing, when we start seeing that the homeless people are not going to return to the streets, when we start noticing that those old people that used to be on their own before COVID are no longer on their own because we've connected with them, that single woman, that single mother that can't feed her children now has a permanent source of food just because things were highlighted during Lock Thy Neighbor. So that's just all I want to say, that there is a cloud in the silver, there's a silver lining in the cloud that although things have been hard, you know, it's an opportunity for us to let change come. Although we're sowing with tears and with sadness, we're going to reap with a lot of joy. Thank you very much.
Father, thank you that in Jesus we have the one who breaks the chains that bind us and frees us to be the people you want us to be in this city. And Father, help us to be people of praise and of prayer, people who stand on your promises. Help us to be those who pray for the leaders of this nation and for the leaders of this city and for those who head firms in this city. Give us the confidence to stand on your promises that we will return with joy, carrying our sheaves with us, that we will see your restoring work in the square mile. And I pray now that as we return to our desks or whatever, that uh, we would know your presence with us. That you would fill us with your spirit. And that you would protect us as your people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah.